Thomas and Terence. Autumn had come to the island of Sodor. The leaves were changing from green to brown. The fields were changing too, from yellow stubble to brown earth. As Thomas puffed along on his branch line with Annie and Clarabelle, he heard the chug, chug, chug of a tractor at work. One day, stopping for a signal, he saw the tractor close by. Hello, said the tractor. I'm Terence. I'm plowing. Hello, said Thomas. I'm Thomas. I'm pulling a train. What ugly wheels you've got. Terence said that his wheels were not ugly. They're caterpillars, he said. I can go anywhere. I don't need rails. I don't want to go anywhere, said Thomas huffily. I like my rails, thank you. Soon winter came with dark heavy clouds full of snow. Thomas's driver didn't like it. A heavy fall is coming, he said. I hope it doesn't stop us. Pah, said Thomas. Snow is silly soft stuff. Nothing to it. And he puffed on, taking no notice. Thomas finished his journey safely, but by now the fields were covered and the rails were two dark lines standing out in the white snow. You'll need your snowplow for the next journey, Thomas, said his driver. Puh! Snow is silly soft stuff. It won't stop me, Thomas snorted. Listen to me, said his driver. We are going to put this snowplow on and I want no nonsense, please. The snowplow was heavy and uncomfortable and made Thomas cross. He shook it and banged it, and when they got back it was so damaged that the driver had to take it off. You're a very naughty engine, the driver said as he closed the shed door that night. Next morning Thomas's driver and fireman arrived early and worked hard to mend the snowplow, but they couldn't fix it. Soon it was time for the first train. Thomas was pleased. I shan't have to wear it. I shan't have to wear it, he puffed. I hope it's all right. I hope it's all right, Annie and Clarabelle whispered to each other. The driver was worried too. The snow's not bad here, he said to the fireman, but it's sure to be deep in the valley. It had been snowing again. Thomas started with his train full of passengers. Silly soft stuff, silly soft stuff, he puffed. I didn't need that stupid old thing yesterday, and I shan't need it today. Snow can't stop me. Thomas rushed into the tunnel, thinking how clever he was, but there was trouble ahead. At the other end of the tunnel, he could see that a heap of snow had fallen from the sides of the cutting. Silly soft stuff, said Thomas, and he charged into the snow. Cinders and ashes, he cried. I'm stuck. And he was. Back, Thomas, back, called his driver. Thomas tried to go back, but his wheels spun round and he couldn't move. More snow fell down and piled up around him. The guard went back for help while the driver, fireman, and passengers tried to dig the snow away from Thomas's wheels. But as fast as they dug, more snow slipped down and Thomas was nearly buried. Oh, my wheels and coupling rods, said Thomas. I, sh I shall have to stop here until I'm frozen. What a silly engine I am. And Thomas began to cry. At last a bus came to rescue all the passengers. Then Terence the tractor came chugging through the tunnel. Snow never worried him. He pulled the empty coaches away and came back for Thomas. Thomas's wheels were clear but they still spun round and round when he tried to move. Terence tugged and slipped and slipped and tugged. At last he pulled Thomas clear of the snow, ready for the journey home. Thank you, Terence. Your caterpillars are splendid, said Thomas gratefully. 
I hope that you will be sensible now, Thomas, said his driver crossly. I'll try, said Thomas, as he puffed home.